The son preference is a form of gender bias in which families prioritize having sons over daughters for economic, historical, or religious reasons. This is common in countries across East Asia, South Asia, the Middle East, and North Africa. And what these countries have in common is what is called patrilineality. Patrilineality is a social order where lineage is passed from father to son. And within the social order, there are more economic and social benefits that are yielded when having a son compared to having a daughter. In the year 2024, we still find ourselves living in a patrilineal society where boys are valued more than girls, men are valued over women, and the lives of women is not valued when compared to the lives of men. Hi, my name is Florence and I'm a black woman living in Germany who loves reading books and just exploring topics that come up uh, when I read books. Uh, I also have a podcast that you can listen to, the One More Book podcast. I will link it below in the info box. And you can also follow me on Instagram and on TikTok where I share day-to-day -day reviews of books that I read. Uh, the topic today was inspired by my recent read, which is A Woman Is No Man by Etta Frum. This is a book by a Palestinian author who is based in the USA. And it just brought up so many topics that I'd, I would love to talk to you about. I also have a few TikTok videos that I found while I was researching this topic and also some statistics that I'll also share with you during this uh, video. So if you like this type of videos, please subscribe, like and comment and share your thoughts. I would love love, love to hear from you. And if you've read this book or any book that you feel has just spoken to you, and especially as we are living in this patrilineal society, please share them with me. There is an article that I found online that I will also share with you here or maybe below in the info box where there was a an conference that was held in 2022 uh, where the researchers found out and they shared their findings that exists a disproportionate toll that conflict takes on women and the LGBTQ plus community. Thinking in terms of sexual violence, the mass exodus of refugees and the risk of poverty, for which single women are more at risk, even in times of peace, among other factors, but especially in conflict areas. At the moment, we are living in a time where there is one conflict after another. We are seeing countries invading other countries and we are seeing mass migration, refugees needing safe places to live in, needing safety. They, they're running for their lives. And who are the most affected by this? Women. Because they come from societies that patriarchy still reigns big. Patriarchy is upheld by women just as much as it is upheld by men. Feminists must stop waging their struggle against men and understand that their struggle for liberation is against the system of patriarchy. It's commonly misunderstood that patriarchy is a biological process, which would mean that men are inherently violent and it is something that is essential to their nature. But we must recognize that men face gendered violence under patriarchy as well, and that there's no understanding of patriarchy that can exist outside of an understanding of imperialism and colonialism. The structures of patriarchy exist to subjugate working class and racialized men globally. Under invasions, military occupation, policing, men are subjugated to a similar type of violence that women are being subjugated to. But because of a poor understanding of patriarchy, we often overlook that and refuse to grant these men any sort of humanity. As that creator has said, we see patriarchy not only affecting women, but it also affects men. Because we see, especially in countries or in societies where there is white supremacy or colonialism, or just the thought that there are groups that are above or above each other. There is a hierarchy when it comes to our existence as humans. We see men, of course, they themselves are victims of patriarchy because this is a society that, where they were born in. And they are brought up to think that if we do this, we continue doing this, we might also be saved. But we see who do they exert this pressure on. It's the women who are under them. And we also see women who also have experienced this discrimination when it comes coming from the uh, men in their lives. And we see them continuing, continuing this trauma, this trauma that they went through. They continue passing it on to 
the people and the people we, they live with. We see in this book, Farida, we meet Farida, who is the mother-in-law. And through her stories, we learn that she was also suffering from the hand of patriarchy. But instead of making a difference for her daughter-in-law and her grandchildren, she decided to actually just propagate the same, same struggles that she had onto the people around her, onto her daughter-in-law and onto her granddaughter. I'm just going to get right into it. Mothers are doing their sons a disservice. Michelle Obama said it best. Mothers raise their daughters and love their sons. Is it just me? But it's just like, these days it's like men actually don't know how to be men. And this is not just because, oh, there's lack of fathers in the home. I feel like even when there are fathers in the home, mothers have this tendency, whether they're aware or they're not aware, that they baby their sons. And in doing so, you're doing a disservice to them. Now they're not able to think for themselves, do for themselves. They're not able to take the initiative like a man is supposed to be doing. And I feel like this is why women, when they get in relationships with these types of men, it's like you also take on that role of being a mother. It's like you've seen this being done at home, that when you get in relationships, it's almost normal for you to do this for a man. But we must stop. Immediately. I think it's also important for us to realise these behaviours and habits and make sure we don't continue them. I'm about to vent. I really hate the fact that African parents use so much time and energy to turn their daughters into wives. We are trained to become wives. Why their sons are just useless cockroaches roaming the earth for free. Oh my god, Joe, that's so aggressive. That's so mean. But did I lie? The moment we can walk. Matter of fact, the moment they figure out that our hands work, we're taught to start washing dishes. Why are you not teaching your sons to be husbands before they become husbands? Why do I have to teach your son to become a husband? Matter of fact, not even a husband. Why do I have to teach your son to be a sensible human being with common sense? Why? I know it's not all African men, but it's 99.9%, .9%, so... Exactly. When it comes to the way we are raised, the way girls and boys are raised, we realize that we are raised differently. Women or girls, we are raised to be forgiving, to always be of sub, subservient to the men in our lives. We are supposed to serve and obey and just keep peace. We are always the peacekeepers. Whenever there is a problem, it is us to calm everything down. They say, why are you not taking care of your family? Take care of your husband. We are raised. What about your brother? Did your brother eat? Did you provide this for your brother? We are just brought up from childhood to always be the caregivers to our brothers, to our fathers, and later to our husbands. And it just ingrains in us this people-pleasing attitude, people-pleasing behavior that we are always just bending down, bending down to make people happy, just to keep peace. I remember when we were young, my mother would always tell us, choose your battles, choose your battles which actually meant that there are things that you should not argue about. There are things that you should just say to maintain peace, peace, let me keep quiet. And we see more women coming out and saying, no, this is not how I want my life to go. We see studies are now showing that women are the ones suffering from chronic pain, chronic diseases, internal diseases, because they keep inside so much. You're always told to be the bigger person, but to what end? To what end? It's now time for us to unlearn. And I just love books like these. And people are just coming out and saying, no, this is not the life I want for myself and for my future. I want to say no when I feel like I need to say no. Mama, yalla, I'm going out. Habibi, Allah ma'ak. Allah yawafak, inshallah. Tiba halak, mama, okay? Inshallah, hek tli'i lak shi'a aruz, halu, tistih lak. Habibi, Allah ma'ak tuqbarni. Bye bye. Mama, I'm going out too, okay? Like, shu going out? When raha bat siyab aslan? Madin, last week dhaharti. Shu kill asbaa badek tadhari every week, yani? Ma'anna banat hek biya dhaharu every week. Like, what will people say? Shu nahna anna banat shawariya? Ma fi dhahra. Futi dubbili hal uda al mejwili lim alat amitlik. What? Mama, that's so unfair. Wala kilme, yalla. Futi nabri. Ba'a shway aslan bija khayi. Dek tsaadini bila asha, nansawi lo asha, hala bhun jayi jaan haram. Yalla, yalla, nabri. If, some, if you're in a situation or you come upon a discussion or you, you're involved in a relationship where you feel like, no, I'm not getting the good end of the stick. Why am I always getting the short end of the stick? It is time for us to stand up and just say no. No to people pleasing behavior, no to patriarchy.
think about how the patriarchy perpetuates people-pleasing behavior for a lot of women. And from a young age, girls are socialized to be nurturing, accommodating, and self-sacrificing. And they're often encouraged to prioritize the needs and feelings of others before their own. And I just believe that the more we talk about it, the more we bring awareness to it, the more we can undo people-pleasing behavior. And we see it happening across all societies. This book is based on a story or, yeah, she is of Palestinian descent. So the story is more of the, the side of the Arab culture. But I see it in several societies, in different societies, even in the African societies, where girls are raised, but boys are loved. We see girls are being raised to always take care. You're always taking care of people. From the age when you are now able to do something in the house, you're always given chores and you're always told to serve. When it comes to even, I remember even when you're serving food, when you've prepared food, who gets to eat first? It is always the man who is given food first. That's how we were trained. Give the man first food and then the children and then women or so, the person who cooked always eats last, which is something that we have to change. It's something that we have to change because at the end of the day, these men have to also be responsible for themselves, for their own lives. Why is it that the woman always has to be doing the things, doing the cooking, doing the cleaning, taking care of the children, and also working outside the house and also working in the, inside the house? When we come back, why is it that there are household chores that are for the women? Why is it that there are some things that the man feels like, I cannot do? Why is it that when it comes to child, child raising, childbearing, of course the woman is doing the childbearing. But when it comes to raising the children, why is it that it is the responsibility is left to the woman? She's the disciplinarian. She has to cook. She has to clean. I think it is time Time for women to say, no, enough is enough. And also, we should not put all the blame on our fathers, put all the blame on our the men in our families. What about the women? What about us as women? What about us as mothers? Are we bringing change? If we have sons, are we telling them that, no, this, this is what we are supposed to do in this house? Everyone is going to share chores. They are not chores that are for women, for girls, and they are not chores that are for boys. Everyone does the same chores. We are all equal. And even when it comes to bearing children, when, when you decide that, okay, I have, this, uh, I have decided that I would love to, to create a family, let us appreciate every all genders. It doesn't matter if you get a girl or a boy. I've seen like in China, there are societies, the Asian community or in the Chinese community, where they say um, educating a girl is like pouring water down on the ground. That just means that they do not appreciate the, the woman. They do not appreciate the girl child. We see even when it comes to education, who gets to go into higher education? It's usually the boys because they say the girls... Why should I waste my funds to educate this girl when she'll end up getting married and bring take all everything that I had invested in her and take it to her husband's family? That is not right. Let us give each child their right. Let us appreciate all genders. Let us be make sure that our girls get the same or even better more opportunities than our boys. But let us create create equal opportunities for all our children. I take the ball, I bounce it, I shoot, I miss it. Oh! Let us fight for gender equality when it comes to access to education. According to the UNESCO, women still account for nearly two thirds of the million of adults without basic literacy skills. Poverty, geographical isolation, minority status, disability, early marriage and pregnancy, gender-based violence, and traditional attitudes about the status and role of women and men. Those are among the many obstacles that prevent children and youth from fulfilling their right to participate and complete and benefit from education. 
as we have seen, it is mostly girls and women who pay the highest price. It is girls and women, even as we read this book, when there is migration, when we see people moving from one country to another, when they are not exposed, they are not exposed to their culture, they are not exposed to the language. We see women who are kept like prisoners inside their houses. They cannot even go to the market alone. They need a man or an older woman or an older member of the family to go with them. It's like they fear that when they expose you, when you're exposed, then you will run away. But what does that mean? When they fear that you will run away, that just means that they are holding you captive. You are living in captivity. You cannot speak the language. You cannot use the public transport. I know so many cases personally where you will meet someone, you will, will be at a park where different communities come. And of course, we are celebrating, we are enjoying the weather with children and different uh, families. And we see some women come up and they say, do you know what? This is the first time that I'm coming here alone without my husband. In the year 2024, in the year 2024, you don't even feel comfortable to leave your house without your husband. Because in as much as you feel like he is protecting you, protecting you from what? What is out there that he fears that will happen to you? Some say, oh, she will be taken away. Then that just means that you are not giving this woman, she is not living in a, a house or a home that she feels comfortable in. And do you think that making her live inside this kind of prison, is that the happiness that you want for her? Don't you think that she, if she gets the opportunity, she will run away? She will escape this captivity. And these are people who are grown up. You find, for example, women who have come from different countries who are now living here. They've been sent like brides. Someone is just sent. A woman is just sent from their country. I would say, for example, like to Germany. They are just sent. They've never met this man. They were betrothed when they were kids. Suddenly they come here. They do not understand the language. They now start having children. The man does not allow them to go outside on their own. They don't make friendships. So they can't even communicate. or They can't even say, hey, what is happening to me? And for someone to say, no, whatever you're explaining doesn't sound good. It actually sounds like abuse. But it's because of this fear that has been instilled in them through culture, through tra traditionals, and even through religion. These are things that we need to change. And one of the ways to change this is education. Let us educate our girls. Let us give, give them books to read. Let their world, open their world to the different cultures that they have. Let them learn languages. Let them travel. Encourage them to find out what is out there in the world. Cis hetero women will be fully free of the patriarchy when they stop valuing marriage and traditionalism as a way to save them from the isolating, crippling loneliness that is capitalism, the emptiness that they experience from jobs that they don't find fulfilling, from the lack of hobbies, from years of having movies and TV. Tell them that centering their life around a man and having him save you from the horrors of patriarchy, a man in your house to quote unquote protect you um, from who, you guessed it, other men, will somehow give her some power in, in society, but really it's all conditional. Instead of her being taught to empower herself and, you know, you can still have those things. Someone's telling you not to be a trad wife, but you can't make being a wife and a mother the center of your entire being. There's more to life than that. You can have hobbies and things that fill you up and give you joy because a child can be taken away, a marriage can end quickly, and homes and lives can be destroyed like that. So stop talking about men. Stop talking about dating. Stop even talking about children and the nuclear family. Find purpose in community instead. Let us stop this being this close, the close mindedness. When she decides, hey, I don't want to be married. Hey, I don't feel like having children. Or even if they are married, leave the door open. Tell your daughters, tell your sisters, wherever you are. If you're not happy, come back home. We, we will always have an open door for you. Come back home. There is no shame. When, I'm, when a marriage breaks down, come back home. 
this home is always open for you. Let us do away with this shame that we instill on our girls and on our women. If they are not married by so and so age, if they don't have children, if they don't give us male children, if they do, why is there so much pressure on our girls? Let the girls live the life they want to live. Let women do whatever they want to do. If they decide they want to study, let them study. Let us support them. Give them the support that they need. I'm very passionate when it comes to stories about women. And when I read, I just, I feel just fueled. I feel fueled to, to come out and just encourage. Let us encourage each other. Let us encourage our girls. And let us read. I really, really love this book. This is, this is a five-star read for me. Etta Froome opened up. She tells the story of women, Palestinian women, who are now in the U.S., some in their lives starting in Palestine. And of course, because of the military invasion and occupancy, they moved to the U.S. But it is a story that resonates with so many people, so many people. Highly, highly recommend this book. Please, if you have any more books that have also just ignited the fire in you to fight, let me know. I would love to read them. But I would really, really recommend this book, A Woman is No Man by Etta Froome. Thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.